Hey everyone, welcome to a special midweek box opening. Because this week I'm opening the Ghostbusters 2 um, Kickstarter package from Cryptozoic. So, last year, for my birthday, my awesome wife got me the Ghostbuster 2 Cryptozoic Kickstarter thing, um, the, all the extras, and after I don't know how long, 13, 14 months, today is the day. We're recording it the same day that I got it, we're publishing this the same day, here you go. All right, I've pre-cut the box because that's not interesting. And this is an amazing piece of white cardboard. I don't know how this protects anything, but it's not, it was on the top. All right, don't need that. All right, should I open the main box first or the peripherals? I'm gonna open the main box. Main box, main box, main box. All right, Ghostbusters the board game two. Upside down. Oh, Ghostbusters the board game too. Um, this is pretty impressive. This, I mean, it feel the number one's big. It's bigger than the last one. Um, the first one was, I mean, awesome because I, I just wanted more Ghostbusters. This was like two years ago. Wanted more Ghostbusters stuff and got good, more Ghostbusters stuff. I, I'm excited though because they added a lot of things. I saw the prototype of this at, I think, WonderCon. And it was pretty awesome. So, okay. Tonight, the city will be Vigo's, unless you can stop him. I like that they were able to use the Ghostbusters 2 art. Oh, this is the uh, deluxe edition. All right, Ghostbusters the board game two, operations and field manual. I uh, I really like this art style. I, I do believe this is a comic book, right, guys? I, I haven't read the uh, the comic book, but I, I do like the art style. It is a comic book. It is a comic book. So, bunch of fiction. I would read Ghostbuster books. I, I should look. I don't, I don't know if they exist, but I would read them. Um, now, I always like their big books, right? This is a, a big manual. It's very clear. Lots of pictures. This is a standalone version of the board game, so you don't need the first one. Um, I think you can play with them together, if I remember right. But, uh, yeah, six types of slime. Um, there's equipment now, and that's super cool, because that's something like... It, the first one felt like an RPG, but there was no equipment for your characters. Now there's going to be equipment. And I think that's huge. I think that, you know, in the movies, when you see them pull out the little weird gadgets, it it was cool and it was different. And to have it all just kind of wrapped into the character, it's nah, it, that's not, that's not an RPG, right? And I wanted an RPG-like experience. Because that's what I love. I love, I love RPG experiences. Um, just kind of going through. I'm very interested in the uh, Statue of Liberty thing. Some scenario card rules. Uh, playing with ghost traps. Um, oh, they're optional. You don't need, but... If you want to have the rules of you have to throw a trap and you have to like um, deploy them and then get the trap back, I, I, that's pretty cool. Honestly, I would probably like I, if that's like hardcore mode, I want to play with it that way. Um, a nice summary sheet. Again, you can get this big giant rule book. You should have some use out of the back of the book. I like it. Uh, all right, let's. So. Um, Rays. 
World of the Psychic with Dr. Peter Venkman. I like that. That's cool. Looks like they have some uh, character-specific um, tiles. Wow. Look at that, guys. Um, that is a lot of figures. And they are cool, and they are transparent. And, uh, yeah, that's... Let's get these out of here. So, the uh, characters. This is uh, specifically Bankman. He looks uh, much more scummy <laughs> in, in, with this art style than uh, than he even does in real life. Does he look scummy? I don't think so. I don't think he really looks slimy. He just kind of looks crazy. This Bankman. Looks kind of like a oily car salesman. I feel bad, like some car salesman's gonna like. I feel like he always looks like that. Yeah. Yeah, he, he comes across as like a little bit of like a, a salesman. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, no, he comes off that way, definitely. That's how he acted on the character. Yes. But he didn't like. He didn't. It doesn't just look like. A, uh, a car salesman, but they drew him like he looks like a He's just got this smarmy grin on his face. It's it's not This is not a nice guy and he really isn't a nice guy, so it's appropriate. I Don't know any anybody out there that really like when you watch Ghostbusters you were like I'm Vinkman like that's who I want to be Because personally I want to be Egon of course. We all want to be Egon. <laughs> so, okay. So we, what we've got, we got the four primary Ghostbusters. Um, I love their backs. The backs are like some, uh, um, they're, they're lanyards, you know? Um, oh, and it describes their powers. That's actually better. Last time they had narrative text and now they actually have an explanation of how their level, their higher level powers work. And Mulan totally wants to get in on some Ghostbuster stuff, but uh, okay, boom. And then we've got all the all the ghosts, which is quite a few of them, with how they work and how their slimes work and uh, all that kind of different stuff. Each basically each model of ghost has you know kind of different powers. Uh, of course, this villain is Vigo, the Carpathian. Carpathian. Um, all right, so we have one, two, three, four scenarios. One, two, three, four more. That's eight scenarios. And then we have one, two, three, four more scenarios with the Tolly. Now, people were really upset in the first one that Tully, Louis Tolly was not available in the game. So this Kickstarter, including Louis Tolly, is like sort of like a, you know, sort of like, hey, not we we know we didn't include him in the first one i like i don't know if it was planned or what but to include him and a special scenario everything for him i think that's pretty awesome um at any rate this is a lot of gameplay right this is this is i think a lot of value for for this box and that's not even including the other kickstarter stuff but just if, if all you were buying was this box seems like you get an awful lot all right, um, I don't want to pull all of them out, but you know, I want to get at least. There is. So the goo pile. Uh, yeah, unless there's more cards hidden in there. I think this is all the, all the stuff. So the goo pile is new. And it looks like it's kind of it looks like kind of random what you might get. Um, maybe you search the goo. I don't know. We'll just, but at any rate, it looks like you might get equipment. You might get equipment uh, events. You might get um, the key items, whatever that means. Okay. And then here's the event cards and equipment cards, right? So you have the slime cards that say to do an event or do equipment. 
Um, let's get an example event. The Pied Piper of Manhattan. A ghost is trying to lure people to it. Leave the goo pile on the map until the event is finished. And then it says, get out of line of sight of the space by the end of the next round. Success. Each Ghostbuster who is not within line of sight of this space gains 3 XP. Failure. Each Ghostbuster within line of sight of this space gains a minus one line of sight slime token. I think that's pretty cool. That is going to really change the gameplay experience and kind of give you obstacles that you have to avoid or, or do. I, that's that's pretty cool. I, I think that's a lot better than the way that you gained XP in the last one. Well, you get XP in the same way as now, but you just have extra. Yeah, you're getting extra this way. And I like that it's not just bad. Yeah. It is bad, yeah. but you have an option to, to avoid the bad and get something good. Right. I wish it was just in the, in the unboxing, guys. But, you know, she likes to be off camera, <laughs> run the equipment. All right, so equipment. What do we have? Proton Pistol Mark II, Proton Cannon, Septra, uh, Septech, Mini Biocontainment Vortex, Multidimensional Castellator, Portable Concept Hut, Necronomicon, Codex of St. Theophilus, Proton Pistol, Mentra Slime Blower, Ghost Bomb, Boson Caster, Slime Pit, Ecto Goggles. Ecto Goggles. These, right? It should have been in the first one, but it wasn't. That's fine. But I want this kind of stuff. The person with the Ecto Goggles, Ray, should have some sort of benefit, and he does. Plus one line of sight. Um, I don't know what the levels do, but place three timers, uh, time, timer counters on this card instead, and then plus one to combat rolls. There's value to using the equipment. I think that's super cool. There's a bunch more of it. Uh, Kind of has that RPG feel, like D and stuff. All right, so uh, there's some other interesting stuff in here. It says, oh, just more events. Um, baby Spookums, a dimensional crack has opened up, and Baby Spookums wandered through and got lost. Summon a marked Class One ghost and emerges from the nearest gate. In four player turns, deposit the marked Class One ghost into this goo pile. Success. The Ghostbuster who deposited the marked ghost gains 3 XP. Each other Ghostbuster gains 1 XP. Failure. Remove the marked ghost from the scenario, then summon two Shadow Class 3 Haunted Humans. They emerge from two random gates. Wow, that is pretty damn harsh. It is. I'm, I'm assuming the Shadow Haunted Humans are corporeal humans, so you can't... Uh, trap them and they generally uh, you know they're harder because they push you around and stuff at least in the, in the other game all right so let's this is, all right okay all right so what do we have here so we have a mailman and his stomach is a mouth uh, I don't think you'll be able to see that, but uh, I'll zoom in. Pretty awesome. We've got a, looks like maybe, maybe a cop and he's got like a tongue extending out like a tentacle. Um, we've got these weird cat demons. Um, we had Cthulhu last time. Now we have cat demons. Um, we have, I don't know, honestly, it kind of looks like a toy from one of the, like when I was a kid, you put a quarter in the machine and you get like weird, actually probably a diamond in the machine. I'm old. Um, and you get these weird alien plastic toys. Uh, that's what it kind of looks like to me. Um, we've got some serpents, flying serpents, almost looks like, uh, oh, it's two headed serpents with bat wings on each head. Pretty cool. Uh, some sort of weird brain thing. Now, in D&D, there was a, a brain uh, thing that would latch onto your head and uh, suck out your, your mental energy. Um, we've got... We've got a scary... 
Um, it's possibly Mary Poppins. Or it's possibly a scary British gentleman. The haunted human? Is it a haunted human? It's transparent. Oh, that, that's a... He's not a, he's not a possessed human. I think... Th- oh, no, that's a Ghostbuster. Um, Tony Sorelli? And then I've got a pile of goo. Goo. Um, By the way, the one that you were talking about that looks like one of those weird monsters is called the sore throat. The sore throat. And then brain matter is what the brain was. Boom. The Statue of Liberty. Because this this is really a board game about, I'm fairly sure, the movie Ghostbusters 2, right? So um, everything that happened in the movie, you've got scenarios for it, including, I think, riding around the Statue of Liberty. Pretty awesome. Pretty unique. You've never done that in another board game, I promise you. And then someone will post, and I'll be like, I promised you, but I was wrong. And that's okay. All right, um, weird serpent demon. I actually wanted to bring this to the microphone like you could somehow see it better if you could hear it better and it makes no sound. It's a long day. You're making noises in your head that you think you're making out loud. I am making noises in my head. <laughs> so what is this? I don't know. It is a goo that you can put someone in. Maybe. Um got a cool this guy this guy actually looks really cool it's called super plasm the super plasm actually that comes with uh and there's the littler ones and then there's the medium sized ones hyper there's grand okay this ghost is two parts which is kind of cool because i hope that there's some system for when he separates like the other oh. it looks Different. it looks yeah. on purpose or the glue uh, fell off and it's fine either way because it seems cool but uh, yeah it looks like he is a convict who maybe died on the electric chair which I think maybe was from the movie I think there was a character there like was that a character yeah like that. Um, some big giant tall uh, monster bald guy with his big Washington giant mouth. Washington Square Ghost. Washington Square Ghost. He's a class six boss ghost. Class six boss ghost. Why are you repeating the computer, Richard? I've got one job, people. <laughs> All right. Um, boom. Uh, it is a maggot monster. <laughs> maggot monster. It, it's kind of cute. Oh my god, that's probably the baby one that you're talking about. Just kidding, I have no idea what it is. All right, uh, so we got some specialty dice and got some clips for our, our experience trackers. It's probably a street creeper. I prefer Maggot Monster. Talk to me, Cryptozoic. I'll name all your things for you. And of course, uh, it's interesting that he's solid, but I guess he wasn't transparent in the um, um, Vic the Carpathian. Vigo. Vigo. Vigo the Carpathian. Yeah, he's he's not he's uh, he's corporeal. You're like the buzzing of flies to him. Buzzing of flies because maggot monster. Okay. Titanic ghost. Again, something to hold you in the game doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's going on here. Um, but uh, it is a it is a tower statue that you could stand in. Don't know. Pretty cool. It's for Tully. No, no. The reason why they said that there was a Tully expansion is because Tully is one of the Ghostbusters you can choose. It's almost as if she didn't watch the first part of this video. 
But you people at home did, and you know that I went over Tully. Post down below if you wish she had actually been in the video instead go. of just a, like, ooh, a hand from off screen. What? It's Ghostbusters. You're supposed to have some <laughs> weird random person talking all right. outside. All the, the all the bases. Um, I assume you color code the monsters so you know which one they are by putting different color bases on them. Very cool. Um, boom. I... Okay. Ooh, I like how they made it look like it's a 3D, like, little, uh, um, notebook. Yes. It yep. Like notebook. Pretty cool. Mm. It is actually pretty cool. Um, so... That's a lot of good details in just that one box of stuff. So I feel like Cryptozoic learned so much making the first one. You're going to have a very difficult time putting all that back in if you start putting all the cards in the Why? big box. No, it's going to fit perfectly. It's going to fit, but you're going to have a mess. Wait, what are you talking about? You'll see. Okay. Um, so... Because those cards go on top. Oh. Um, so... Why didn't you say something, people? Um, so what... You know, Cryptozoic learned, I think, learned so much from making the first one because there's things like, you know, honestly, before, some of the characters were kind of hard to tell apart. And... Did you even go over what the Ghostbusters look like? You know. All right, guys. So... Lesson learned, do not put your cards in here. You close the top, then you put the cards in. Okay, but I didn't uh, I didn't call out the Ecto-1 last time. It's very cool. Um, yeah, I I think it's better than the first one. It's a lot better than the first yeah. one. It looks a lot like the Lego. Everything to Anna's Legos, everything. The tiles, uh, just a little bit real quick. Um, again, what I now what I'm looking for something I didn't really fully appreciate before was how close this is to the movie, and that is pretty cool. Um, but because of it, now I, obviously I want to see in the map pieces which ones are closest. Okay, so I commented before that we ha we saw some stuff from, um, well, this is World of Psychics, right? Because the, the movie starts out and they've all kind of like moved on. Um, we've got, don't know, doesn't really stand out too much. The Spectral Carriage. Um, weird, okay. A um, bunch of rules for that. And we've got uh, lots and lots of broken places. Like, there's, there's a lot of rubble. Uh, let's see here. Carriage? That is so super awesome. What? Why? Remember, he gets, the baby gets taken in the spectral carriage from her window. That is super awesome, people. I did not even think carriage like, like a baby carriage. Yeah. Hmm, okay. It might be. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't played the game or looked into it. I want to be zipped around in a in a spectral carriage. Right. <laughs> oh, these are two sided, so of course you can see a lot of the subway stuff. Right when the when they're looking down at the river of uh, ectoplasm underneath the city. Here we go. Yeah, this is all the um, the ectoplasm like seeping up through the streets. Boom. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yep, I like, I like that. You can see the, like the the railing and stuff underneath. Oh, uh, and then uh, we've got what? Uh, the ectoplasm tank, bunch of ectoplasm, and 
Ghostbusters board game too, and it just seems like a kind of a commemorative poster kind of thing. So that's pretty cool. In the, uh, the first one, you had one as well. Yeah. All right, let's try to get it all back into the box. So one thing about the, honestly, all miniature games, but the Ghostbusters in, in particular, each of these ghosts only fit where they go. And unlike a lot of games where there might be like only four types of monsters, look at this. It just seems like there's a lot. Um, and if you play with both, both boxes together or something, it's just a lot that only fit in one place. I kind of feel like taking a picture and well obviously I have the video now but um, I recommend like figuring out a method so you immediately know where everything goes so you can just smash it all back in because I don't know about you guys but after I play a long game I just want to pack up and take a break like my brain is is tired that's me awesome rule book all right plenty more stuff here plenty more stuff uh, let's get this. Party started. Get this party started like 1990. 1999. Is that when the second one was out? No. <laughs> I have no idea when uh, it came out. All right. So, if if you're like me, you... 1989. 1989, okay. If you're like me, you learned to love Ghostbusters from the Ghostbusters cartoon. And uh, a big part of the Ghostbusters cartoon was Slimer was their friend. He's kind of like the cute, special needs puppy dog ghost that uh, everybody loves. <laughs> It makes no sense because in the movie he's disgusting and really not a nice guy but as a nod in the second movie at least they did uh, have him do something for him at any rate here it looks like Slimer is a playable character and a natural fog is rolling into New York Harbor bringing with it a fearsome skeleton crew led by the ghost pirate captain Jack Higgins their goal Retake their stolen treasure by any means necessary. When the Ghostbusters need some help dealing with these swashbuckling marauders, who are they gonna call? Slimer. The green spud that served as the Buster's first catch is now one of the team and ready to spray slime and shoot proton streams to defend the Big Apple from these spooky scalawags. Parlay. No, I just added that. I love the word parlay, ever since uh, um, Pirates of the Caribbean. All right. What do we have here? We have the stag. Oh, it's a, it's a boat, so you can drive the boat. Got some tiles. See, the, the first Ghostbusters game, you couldn't justify having lots of expansions because without equipment and other RPG elements, it just didn't feel like enough of a game to ever make me want to buy more scenario packs. But this is a little bit more like Hero Quest or Warhammer Fantasy Quest where, honestly, they could just keep selling me more of these things and I would play with these new heroes with new equipment things that will make all the all the characters more interesting. I don't know. I like it. I like it. Okay, we can see lots of boat uh, boat shaped themes. It says this does require this pack requires the main game, so I don't think we can just bust out Slimer and and start playing. Probably need some tiles from the main game. But uh, so you got lots of new ghosts, and you got two two Slimers. Now something I didn't comment before is that each Ghostbuster miniature. Uh, comes in two forms one with a slime pack and one with a proton pack right we've got a XP tracker for Slimer and we've got two green uh, player tokens don't know why anymore 
but we do. And we got Captain Jack's first mate, Captain Jack Higgins, Skeleton Crew, Buccaneer Skeleton, the four scenario cards, and of course, Slimer's uh, thing. So he he actually is a ghost. He, uh, he is not affected by red and orange map lines. So he can just pass through things. He still has to end his movement in solid space, but that is very cool. Like when you're playing Slimer, you play differently than the other humans. And I think that's, I think that's good. Um, the scenario cards are good ways to make the game feel different for that. Uh, and they give you plenty of space. Having a two-sided card, I think gives them a lot of, a lot of room to make changes. Let's see what kind of equipment that we might have. See if there's anything unique. Ideally something like a hot dog. I wanted a hot dog card in here, people. I hope that's not too much to ask for. All right, magic spells. Optimal anti-ghost carrying case. Exorcism juice. You know, honestly, if uh, they had had some Slimer juice. Did you guys, high C Slimer? Hey, I love that stuff. Uh, no hot dog cards. Come on, Cryptozoic. No hot dogs. How about a hot dog cart? You know, a hot dog might be silly. Hot dog cart, totally serious. All right. Dude, he, he attacks a, heart, a hot dog cart in the first one, isn't it? When he first gets out? When he gets out? The second time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, very cool. Very cool. I'm not going to... I'm going to pop these out. Honestly, when you have so much Kickstarter stuff, I, I did learn. Um, it's a lot of stuff. So there we go. I love the box. I like I like good side boxes, because if I if the box isn't good, I will throw it away. This seems good though. All right, boom. See this? This is a side box. I'm sure whatever's in here is amazing, but um, I will not be saving it. I don't know what I'll be doing with it either, but I will not be saving it. That's that's for sure. do we have here? Okay. I no idea. Um, it could be a factory, could be some slime stuff. The Roy Lance Guide to Secret Societies and Sex. Don't get excited, people. This is S-E-C-T. All right, so what is going on here? We've got some very cool ghosts. These sculpts, these sculpts are amazing. Like that, honestly, it's really, really good. Look. That's some pretty good detail in there. It is very cool. And again, it's identifiable, like all of these ghosts. That opera singer? Mm -hmm. They are so different from one another you're not going to get confused in any way. And in the first game, because they had this idea that some ghosts would like combine into bigger ghosts, which was an interesting concept, but ended up making it so that some of them seemed kind of similar. I like frog monsters. Um, this is... Is this the female Ghostbusters from the movie? I don't know. It looks no idea. looks like a chick with a cool gizmo. Very, very cool. Maybe maybe magic items. Um, but mm, mm, no, this is some dude. He's grabbing his proton pack. Got a cool guy in a, in a wheelchair. These might be characters from the comic that you don't know about. Well, I kind of know about it. I just don't know anything about it. I just, I just know it exists. And a chicken monster, papa. <laughs> Never again will you ever hear me do a chicken. So this is it. Save this moment. <laughs> Anna, on the other hand, you will hear her do chickens many times. 
If you can even hear it from way far away. All right. I can echo. So the Ware Chicken. Um, yeah. This is pretty cool. I, Maybe it does sound like. Burp, burp. I am so serious, people. Come on now. Did you have any doubt that that's not the sound that they heard in the game? Like that's in the movie, TV show, cartoon, comic book, whatever this is. Of course, that was the sound they made. I wasn't. I wasn't kidding around. This is the Ware Chicken. It's a class three ghost. Yeah, what, what the heck? All right, so Killer Watt. Ghost puns. Orphan Ghost. Orphan Ghost? Oh. No, I don't get it. Don't know. Don't understand it all. Um, it's a class one ghost. Nope. It's on the back of the Ellen Gold. So she's a mini boss. I guess she keeps track of the kids and then... Uh, eh. Orphan ghosts, whatever. Uh, Bug Eye. Grendel marked Ghostbuster. Grendel. Grendel marked Ghostbuster. Okay. So she seems like she's a marked Ghostbuster. Um, that The girl that I didn't recognize. So let's see. Grab her ghost. What do we have here? We have Kylie. No, Kylie's the girl. She's cool. Kylie Griffin. Um... She got cool weapons, cool gadgets. We got Eduardo. We have Roland and Garrett. That is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, like obviously, like you don't want to pander. You just want to include all people and make everyone kind of feel invited to play to the ta- play at the table. And I think that is pretty awesome. Those characters seem pretty cool, and I would be happy to play them. Um, All right, the incan- Incantator Bus. Incantator Bus? Raise a Cult Book, Shop Catalog. I like that. Proton Pack Mark II. Box of Yellow Cake, Yellow Snack Cakes. Uh, direct Delivery Arm Mountain Proton Pack. Water Zapper. Ectovac. Mass Containment Field. Some events. The events, honestly, are cool. Like, you want more events because that way the game is just different. Um, it's got some scenario cards, it's got some cool characters, got some ghosts. Um, kind of got this cool book to hold them in. I wish it had a cool box to go with it. I do. Um, but it was cool. Mighty Meeples. So, if you're not familiar with the Mighty Meeples line from Cryptozoic, these are some pretty cool things. They are meeples that you can use in really any game. You just just for fun. It's um, they're not part of the game itself. But um, they're just very, very cool components for any game if you want to use them. So the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. The, they also sell, in addition to these sets like this, they also sell them in uh, random boosters. So it says number six. I assume you might be able to get him out of a booster pack as well. Um, you got a... Slimer is number five. You've got Ray, number two. <laughs> You've got Egon, number four. You've got Winston, number three. 
you've got kind of a dopey looking Vinkman. Um, I guess he is kind of dopey, right? But this looks much more like the actor who's kind of like clueless and out of it most of the time. Um, sure number one. That. <laughs> I think that's his brand. I think that's his brand. I think he's, he's practiced being out of it uh, and to the point to where he's a, he's a pro. He's, he's the best at what he does. All right. And the last one, the heaviest one of the side boxes. All the stuff with a large amount of foam. All right, what do we have here? We've got uh, things to protect cards. So these are just card protectors. Um, different colors or different backings. Probably. Um, probably for each type of card, right? Um, so uh, I don't know how the reflection will deal with things, but so it's got um, lightning everywhere and ooze and stuff. Ooze, that's Ninja Turtles. This is slime, people. Slime. Um, okay, got, they do have crossover comics, so it's all good. Boost, slime. All right, what is this? This is another like mini pack kind of uh, this is a uh, egon cadaver that's too soon people what the heck actually that's really sad like when he passed away like you knew there was no chance because he was to me again that's who i wanted to be was him um but here you go egon cadaver um Oh, but he's playable with experience. Even after the grave, Egon. Oh, they're all zombies. Mm -hmm. So Winston, Ray, Peter, um, and of course Egon. They are all ghosts, cadavers, something. And then I've got Zombies, maybe? the characters of them, so you can play an undead pack. Um, what the heck? Ghostbusters versus Ghostbusters, maybe? Mm -hmm. It's a PV PvP. Wow. Player. Remove a ghost from the map, but do not gain points. Or choose an unoccupied space in the map and place any ghost from the spirit world in that space. So you got some PvP stuff going on here. That is very interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. Did not expect that. Uh, whoops. We've got... Oh, some traps. Remember I talked about the optional trap rules? Here you go. Here's the icon so you can actually like put them down. Again, when I play, I'm using the trap rules. That's it. I've got minis for them. I must use them. <laughs> Alrighty. We've got... The painting. That's cool. Okay. So... The painting? Oh, and you put like a card in there or something. You should have a painting that goes in there. Or you put the character. Maybe. So we've got... Um, a, a plane? Uh, we've got allies. An ally card counts as an event. The real Peter. The real Peter stumbles out of the goo pile. Huh. 
Weird. There's some, all kinds of weird stuff going on in here. Alright, weird. There's all kinds of stuff. The, the real Peter, the real Ray, the real Egon. They just show up, the real Janine. Um, I don't... I don't really understand, but we'll, you know, we'll learn later on how to play with the real characters as random allies. Um, okay. Oops. Some... I don't know, guys. It... I mean, it looks like a figure could go inside them, but some more traps, some little hats. The uh, real Janine. The the rest of the zombie Ghostbusters. Um, okay. Um, interesting. Got some new tiles. And I don't know how to play with these rules, so I'll have to look it up. Um, at any rate. There's some very interesting stuff here, and oh, here's the helicopter. That little helicopter, right? I said a, there's a plane. Um, normally, with the vehicles with Ghostbusters, when you're in it, you use the tiles to show that you're in it. So there you go. Um, I do not know. Well, okay, let's let's pull these out. Maybe there's a, a scenario card. Peter Demon, Ray Stivs, and Winston Deadmore. I kind of honestly, it kind of reminds me of a uh, one of the episodes or one of the episodes in the cartoons where they encountered themselves possessed or something. But uh, oh, here we go. Okay, PvP rules. It's a variant. Um, they show the pink cards, and they have some critical shots. They show the opposing buster, show some layouts, map one, map two. Um, they show the little, uh, you know, these little things. Uh, red team home, blue team home. So you got some, like, objectives and stuff. All right. So read the rules, folks. It's so much easier than trying to guess what this stuff is for. So... Uh, that's that. This, uh, this has been the Ghostbusters 2 board game opening. And, uh, I, I hope if you ordered it, if you ordered yours, I hope you get yours soon. And if you, uh, if you didn't, maybe find someone, uh, you know, reach out to us, come over, you know, we'll, we'll always, uh, we'll always play. So with that, um... Till next time, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Bye, guys.